Welcome to worship. This is a good time and a good place for us to be together today. Please know that whether you're returning or this is your first time joining us, we are so glad to have you with us in this place. Our worship service for today includes communion, and so in these moments before we begin, I invite you to gather whatever it is you need for communion right where you find yourself today, bread, wine, cracker, grape juice, water, and to have it with you for worship. Our worship service, Family Matters, Expanding Boundaries, is going to pick up um, just a little bit after where we ended last week in Mark's Gospel. Uh, So if you don't know what's going on in Mark's Gospel, Jesus gets to work immediately, preaching, teaching, healing, doing all of those things. And more and more people, as they hear about him, as they witness what he does, are crowding in around him, wanting to get a piece of him, wanting to experience new life in the midst of their brokenness. And it really starts to rile people up. And so Jesus's family, right, his mom and his siblings, they see this and they start to worry about him. They worry what people are saying about him. And so they say, hey, Jesus, hold on. And what happens in the gospel today is Jesus is going to expand the definition then of what family is, who it is that is in God's chosen family, who it is that becomes our siblings through water and word and through God. And this invitation to expand our definition of family is going to be harder for some of us than it is for others. And so as we listen today, I invite you to begin to imagine, to loosen your grip even on what it is that is family. Is it simply blood? Is it simply a matter of name and origin? Or is there something greater at work when it comes to God and the definition of family? And so one more time, then I invite you to gather whatever it is you need for worship right where you find yourself today. And please know that you are welcome to interact with worship through the comments, through the emojis, or through sharing our stream out there for those looking for a space to connect. And so I invite you now, my beloved, to join me in taking a deep breath. And welcome to worship. As always, the words that you see on our screen today, the prayers we pray, the songs we sing are invitation for you to participate as much or as little as appropriate for you. So whether you want to do those things or simply follow along in your head and in your heart, please know however and wherever you find yourself today are welcome in this place. Our worship service for today begins with the gathering. Please join me now in our call to worship. We look to rulers of this earth for wisdom and strength. We look to these bodies of ours for stability and joy. We look to family and friends for love and compassion. But when rulers betray, when bodies fail, when families disappoint, God offers us another look. God will guide us. The Spirit will sustain us. Jesus will welcome us home. So come, siblings, and gather together. Come and find your place in God's family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
so let us pray our prayer of confession together. Holy One, you call us your very own beloved ones to find our life, our home, and our family in you. And yet again and again we fail to do so. Again and again we hide from your presence. Again and again we look for your promises in all the wrong people and all the wrong places. And so we come to you today with our hearts open, with our brokenness and wounds on display, confessing all of who we sometimes are to you. For without you, without your faithfulness and forgiveness, we have no hope of being who you created us and claimed us to be. For our broken relationship with you and one another, forgive us. For the times we listen to other voices instead of to you, forgive us. For our inability to discern between good and evil, forgive us. For the times we put ourselves before our neighbors, forgive us. For our lack of courage and compassion, forgive us. For the times we prefer our own wisdom and our own way, forgive us. Yes, forgive us and reconcile us to you, gracious God, and to one another. In your mercy, give us the courage we need to look at this world the way you do and to claim your heart and your ways as our own. For you alone are our life, our home, and our family. Amen. My beloved, do not lose heart and hear the good news. Despite all our failed efforts to see as God does, to be a faithful people, to act in ways that seek out justice, peace, and love, God still chooses to forgive us, to claim us, and to make their home in us always. Thanks be to God. So join me in giving thanks on this day for the renewing grace of God that invites us again and again into this family of faith by saying the peace of Christ be with you always. Yes, please take this moment to share Christ's peace, both with those with whom you may be gathered today and those with whom you are always gathered across all distances and divides. As we get ready to hear the word of God proclaimed within our midst, let us pray. O Christ, your heart is both welcome and warning, your word both promise and conviction. And so we pray for you to say to us, to do to us, to reveal within us all that will make us whole. For in you we place our hope, our great hope, our living hope, this day and forevermore. Amen. Our service for today continues with the word. A reading from the second book of Corinthians. We're not keeping this quiet, not on your life. Just like the psalmist who wrote, I believed it, so I said it, we say what we believe. And what we believe is that the one who raised up the master Jesus will just as certainly raise us up with you alive. Every detail works to your advantage and to God's glory. More and more grace, more and more people, more and more praise. So we're not giving up. We do not lose heart. How could we? Even though on the outside, it often looks like things are falling apart on us, on the inside, where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. These hard times are nothing compared to the, good, the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow. 
but the things we can't see now will last forever. For we know that when these bodies of ours are taken down like tents and folded away, they will be replaced by resurrection bodies in heaven, God made, not handmade, and we'll never have to relocate our tents again. Word of God, word of life. أحمدك أحمدك من كل قلب قدام قدام الآلهة رنم لك أحمدك أحمدك من Blessed be for all that unfolds us, for each word of grace and every act of care, for those who offer refuge, for each shelter given and every welcome space, for the healing of souls, for balm and rest, for place and chosen family, for the name beloved and for promises of home. Blessed be. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus came home, and as usual, a crowd gathered, so many making demands on him that there wasn't even time to eat. His family heard what was going on and went to rescue him by force, if necessary. They suspected he was out of his mind. The religion scholars from Jerusalem came down spreading rumors that he was working black magic using devil tricks to cast out demons. Jesus confronted them with a story. Does it make sense to send a devil to catch a devil to use Satan to get rid of Satan? A constantly squabbling family disintegrates. If Satan were fighting Satan, there soon wouldn't be any Satan left. Do you think it's possible in broad daylight to enter the house of an awake, able-bodied man and walk off with his possessions unless you tie him up first? Tie him up, though, and you can clean him out. Listen to this carefully. I'm warning you. There's nothing done or said that can't be forgiven. But if you persist in your slanders against God's Holy Spirit, you're repudiating the very one who forgives, sawing off the branch on which you're sitting, severing by your own perversity all connection with the one who forgives. He gave this warning because they were accusing him of being in league with evil. Just then his mother and brother showed up. Standing outside, they relayed a message that they wanted a word with him. He was surrounded by the crowd when he was given the message. Your mother and brothers and sisters are outside looking for you. Jesus responded, who do you think are my mother and brothers? Looking around, taking in everyone seated around him, he said, right here, right in front of you, my mother and my brothers. The person who obeys God's will is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of the Lord.
Grace and peace to you, my beloved, from the one who chooses us as beloved family. Amen. So I'll be honest. I find the reading this week from Mark's gospel to be hard and sort of troubling. It cuts close to home in ways that hurt and raises questions as someone who actually kind of likes her family most of the time, who takes joy from being in their presence. Yes, it raises questions that I do not know how to face or answer courageously. Questions that force me to ask who I am, where I really come from, and to whom it is I actually belong. Which seemed to get even more complicated by the fact that a huge part of why I am here with all of you, a huge part of why I answer to the name pastor, is because of the family I come from, the family that raised me, the family that taught me before anyone else did what it means to be a person of faith, a family that took me to church week after week, that taught me what it means to love God and my neighbor without condition, a family that allowed me to sit around the table on the back porch with them when I was only a kid and engage in real theological debate without telling me I was too young or that questions were not allowed. So yes, to hear Jesus say to the people who gave him life in this world, to the people who protected him for as long as they could, the people who taught him the prayers and the way of his faith, who loved him so deeply that they were willing to face public shame so that his birth could take place, who probably had to sit through way more questions about faith and God and love of neighbor when he was a kid than my parents had to, who let him walk away from the family business when it was time for him to be who he was created to be. Yes, to hear Jesus say that they marry his mother and his siblings, their ties and connections and relationships to him did not bind him, did not define him, did not confine him and who he was. Well, it hurts. And not because I don't want to be a part of this wider family that Jesus describes, to be included in an intimate relationship that goes beyond origin or blood or birth, to be known as beloved by God in the same way that Jesus is. But it hurts because it means that if I want to be a part of that family, if I want to call myself a follower of the Jesus way, then I, then we are going to have to loosen our grip on the people we come from, on the people we currently belong to, including, and this one is the most painful for me, the very ones that we birthed. Yes, we you and I are going to have to figure out a way to talk about fa family that goes beyond what we have been taught, that goes beyond family loyalty or values or blood relationships, that does not make our families into our idols, into the thing we value more than anything else, into the thing that confines us and holds us back. Yes, we are going to have to figure out a way to say that who we are and where we come from, and who it is we actually belong to is God and God alone. And all the people who have been marked by the cross made of water. Now I get that for some of us, this will not be so hard. Because we come from families who have hurt us, because we come from families who seek to define us in ways that do not fit, because we come from families whose love comes with either spoken or unspoken conditions, because we come from families who refuse to see us and accept us for who we are, because we come from families who disappoint us or abuse us or gaslight us or slowly tear us down piece by soul crushing peace in a brokenness that crosses generations. Because we already know deeply what it means to claim chosen family alone. But for others of us, this, 
this will feel hard, almost impossible even, because we come from families who build us up who do their best to model what it means to love without condition, who encourage and push us in good and healthy ways, who want the best for us, no matter what the best looks like. Because we come from people whose hopes and values and tenacity live deep inside our bones. But whether it will be easy or it will be hard, this letting go, this expanding of family, this claiming of God as the thing that marks our hearts. Well, it is exactly what Jesus asks us to do today. With all those people and crowds pushing in on him, prostitutes and tax collectors and lepers and misfits and rejects and simply broken people. Yes, Jesus from the midst of them claims his family. This. He says, this is my family. It is to them that I belong. And when he does this, when these words leave his mouth, he divides up the house. He burns the idol of family down. He goes for the deep, the institutional and the systemic. Outside is in and inside is out. All the barriers and boundaries and borders and walls, all the naming of who is worthy and who is not, who is part of the family and who is not are destroyed completely. For the spirit Jesus says, is wilder and more disturbing and unpredictable than all those good and churchy and family value idol making people have ever let it be. Yes, the world, Jesus says, isn't full of insiders and outsiders, of strangers and like-minded ones, but it is full of family of people who carry both beauty and brokenness inside, of people who shine with the divine spark of God in them, no matter how deeply buried or different than yours it may seem. And it is your job, Jesus says, to let them all in, to surround yourself, with them. It is your job to let the spirit run wildly free, to refuse to confine it by saying what it can or cannot do, who it can or cannot let in. For doing that, Jesus says, is like blasphemy. Yes, it is your job to see that who you are and who you come from and to whom it is you belong is a family defined not by blood or origin or birth, but a family defined and chosen by God. A family made up of people who are your next of kin. Not because of who they come from or where they come from or who other people say that they are, but they are your family because the grace of God has called them your beloved ones, your siblings, bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. And so, my beloved ones, siblings in Christ, if you are looking for a pain-free, comfortable family values type of God that looks exactly the way you want, then I am sorry to disappoint you. You will not find that here. But if you are looking for a God-chosen family, a wild, uncomfortable, unpredictable, full of grace and forgiveness and unconditional love and sometimes even dysfunction family, well then I have good news for you. You have found it. You are home. You are invited in. You are family of God, beloved for exactly who you are and exactly who you were created to be. Amen. <laughs> See my brother, see my brother. When I look into the face of my enemy, I see my brother, I 
Our service for this morning continues with the prayers of the people, and I invite you as is our practice to type any prayer requests that you have into the comments of our worship service, trusting that they will be held by me and by our community this week. And so let us come before God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. For the church, for hearts of mercy, for the ability to share God's love for creation, for the preservation of wilderness spaces, for the restoration of places that are harmed by human hands. For the nations, for a spirit of wisdom, for leaders, for the common good. For those who are oppressed or in any need, for those who are sick, for those who struggle with mental illness or hidden pain. For clarity, for those in a season of discernment, for those navigating changes in relationships, for those looking for peace, for our prayers. For the saints, for their witness, for all who mourn. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Our service continues with the meal. God feeds us with the presence of Jesus Christ. And so let us pause to offer all of what we have and all of who we are to the one whose grace extends to all corners of the world. And so the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Gratitude, praise, hearts lifted high, voices full and joyful, these you deserve. For when we were nothing, you made us something. When we had no name and no faith and no future, you called us your children. When we lost our way or turned away, you did not abandon us. When we came back to you, your arms opened wide and welcome. And look. You prepare a table for us, offering not just bread, not just wine, but your very self, so that we may be filled, forgiven, healed, blessed, and made new again. You are worth all our pain and all our praise. So in gratitude, we join our voices to those of the church on earth and in heaven, God, and community, holy and one. Amen. God who welcomes us home and who calls us their beloved family as we do in our places which you did in an upstairs room, send down your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine that they become for us your body as we become yours. 
For among friends gathered around the table, Jesus took bread and broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. Later, he took a cup of wine and said, This is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Take it, all of you, to remember me. Amen. And so gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So taste and see that the Lord is good. The body of Christ given for you. We are given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. And so may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in their grace. Amen. Our service for this morning concludes with ascending. And so a blessing for all of you. May the lover who seeks and guides us, may the beloved who claims us and welcomes us, and may love itself who renews and sustains us day by day give you hope and courage as you seek to live out the kingdom in the world. Amen.
And so go in peace, my beloved, finding your life and your home in God. And thank you so much for worshiping with us this week. And I cannot wait to worship with all of you again soon.